Welcome guys and girls to this lecture. In this lecture, we're going to discuss a brand new feature of Lambda integration with EFS or Elastic File System. Uh, this is released in June of 2020. AWS Lambda includes a 512 megabyte of temporary file system for your code, uh, but this is a ephemeral resource uh, not intended for durable storage. And as soon as your function stops running, uh, it's gone. So Amazon EFS is a fully managed elastic shared file system and it is durable. So what does EFS integration with Lambda mean? So what that means is a multiple Lambda can use the same elastic file system. So let's say you have three Lambda and you can mount the same elastic file system into all these three lambdas and maybe one lambda can do some computation and write some data another lambda can read data from the same elastic file system and another lambda can delete it that's not it you can also use the same elastic file system from other aws services let's say ec2 so if you have some heavy duty computation that you want to do uh, that maybe takes more than 15 minutes, you can do all that from the EC2. EC2 can write the data into the Elastic File System and then you use Lambda to expose it from an API or maybe do lightweight computation and write some data on top, read data, delete data, etc. So what are some of the features for Lambda EFS integration? EFS is built to scale on demand to petabytes of data, growing and shrinking automatically as files are written and deleted. So when you use this with Lambda, your code has very low latency access to a file system where data is persisted after the function terminates. And you pay for what you use. This is different than when you use EBS or let's say a database like RDS. With EBS and RDS, you have to specify how much amount of resources you're going to use and you're gonna pay for it. Doesn't matter actually how much resource you use. For example, if you allocate a 80 gigabyte of EBS to your EC2, and even if you fill up like five gigabyte in it, you still have to pay for 80 gigabyte. Next, EFS is shared across concurrent executions of a Lambda function. So if one of your Lambda is using a EFS and then traffic grows and your Lambda scales up, all the executions of that Lambda function is gonna have access to the EFS. Next, EFS can be used with provision concurrency. Uh, when the reserved capacity is prepared, this Lambda also configures and mounts the EFS file system. Since provision concurrency executes any initialization code, any libraries or packages consumed from EFS at this point are downloaded. So what are some of the use cases of EFS Lambda integration? Well, the first one is pretty obvious. You can process large files across multiple functions. Uh, like in the diagram we saw before, uh, different Lambda functions can access the same EFS and you can process large amount of files. You can also import large uh, machine learning models code libraries, etc., in the EFS. And again, going back to the diagram, uh, you can use other services such as EC2, EKS, with Lambda using the same EFS. And also we are going to see a demo of this. Uh, we are going to write to the EFS uh, from EC2 using Cloud9 and also from Lambda. Uh, and then we are going to see how this works and more. So up to this point, Lambda was stateless, right? Because there was no permanent storage that you can attach to Lambda. And the temporary space that Lambda was getting was 512 megabyte only. And even that was ephemeral. As soon as your Lambda terminates, that storage goes away. With this integration, Lambda is not stateless anymore. And that opens up lots of possibilities. Uh, but all right, with that being said, let's jump into the demo. Uh, for this demo, I'm going to use this AWS blog uh, and then I'm gonna add another part. I'm gonna explain it. Uh, so the way this goes is we are going to create a EFS first uh, and then we're going to create a Lambda uh, that will access that EFS and we will expose that Lambda using a HTTP API and you can call the API for adding a message, or deleting a message, or get the messages. 
but we'll go one step forward what we are going to do is like we are going to use the same EFS along with the EC2 so we are going to use Cloud9 for that and I'm going to show you guys and girls how two different AWS services can use the same EFS and we will write something from Cloud9 and the Lambda can read it and we will write something from Lambda and Cloud9 can read it, delete it, etc. Alright guys and girls, let's get started. Okay, let's start by creating a Elastic File System. So on the right we have the blog, on the left we have the AWS console. Uh, so I'm just gonna type EFS and then click the EFS, click Create File System. We are going to use the default uh, VPC, click Next Step, and this name, this is just a tag, but we are going to use uh, My Shared File System as the tag. Keep everything as is, click Next Step. Now you have to create a access point to provide applications access to the file system. So let's click a access point. Uh, the name we are giving, going to give message. This is our POSIX uh, user ID. So um, it's a ID, uh, basically whatever was shown in the blog, click next step. Okay, and then click create file system. So it is gonna take a couple minutes. So I'm gonna pause the video and come back. Okay, our EFS is created. Uh, now we are going to create a Lambda function to access this EFS. Uh, so this is my Lambda console. I'm going to click create function. I'm going to give the name of the function as message wall. Uh, going to use Python 3.8. Choose a create and execution role. So we are gonna create a new role and then we have to go and change it so that it can access EFS and VPC. So click create function. Okay, our function is created. So let's go to permissions tab. And this is the role, I'm gonna click it. And we have to attach two more policies. Uh, one is VPC, AWS Lambda VPC access execution role. And the next one is the Elastic File System read write. Amazon Elastic File System client read write access. Okay, let's select it, attach policy. Here we go, the two policies are attached. All right, then go back to configuration and then um, we have to make sure this function is attached to the VPC, the same VPC where EFS is created. Uh, so click edit, click custom VPC and then you should see a default VPC. Okay, you can select any two subnets and this is the security group uh, so we have to attach the same security group that we used with EFS. Uh, so I use the default security group. So I'm gonna select this. Uh, so if I go to EFS, you can see the security group is SG, FE, this one, and this is the default one. Uh, so that's the same one we are using here. Okay, click save. Now let's scroll down. Uh, to the file system. So this is a new section that came just recently. Uh, so here, click Add File System. Uh, this should show all the EFS file system uh, that we created within the VPC. So this is my shared file system. And then the access point, you need access point uh, to access the EFS. Uh, so we created access point name message, so select that. And this is a local uh, mount path. So you can give anything after slash MNT. So we're gonna give slash MNT slash MSG. Okay, let's click save. All right, changes have been saved. Now we are gonna copy paste the code. I'm gonna go over the code as well after I copy paste to the Lambda. Okay, this is the Lambda function, here we go. Okay, so this is the code, uh, pretty straightforward. The message file path is slash mnt slash msg. So the mount path is slash mnt slash msg. It will create a file named content and that's what will be used for all the messages. And then what happens is, let me look at the event handler, here you go. And in the HTTP uh, API call, we can send a get, post or delete. So if you do a get, it's gonna go to get messages. Uh, so if I go to the get messages paragraph, 
uh, it's gonna open the message file path and it's gonna read the messages uh, from this message file path. Uh, if you put a post, it's gonna come to add message. It's gonna open up the file and put the messages in here. And for delete, it is gonna remove the messages. All right, so let's save the code and then we are gonna add a trigger. Okay, now let's click add trigger. We're gonna select API gateway, click create an API. Uh, so API type HTTP API. For security, select open and then click add and that should create the API. Okay, this is the API endpoint. So I'm gonna copy this and uh, put it in my notepad. Okay, so everything is set up for us to test it out. Uh, so to call the API, we are going to use bash. So I'm going to use Visual Studio Code. So make sure this is selected at bash and not PowerShell. Uh, but if you are using a Mac or Linux, then it should work fine as well. So first command is we are curling the endpoint. So I'm gonna do curl, I'm gonna paste the API endpoint. Okay, no messages yet. Okay, next uh, we're gonna post a message. So I'm gonna copy this, paste it in my notepad and then replace the endpoint uh, with the endpoint that we have. Okay, let's copy this, come back to Visual Studio Code and then paste it. Okay, hello from EFS. And now if we do a curl, so this is the get API by default. Now it's coming back as hello from EFS. I'm not gonna show adding more messages and deleting all the messages because you guys and girls got the idea. What I do want to show is how to attach the same EFS to a Cloud9 environment, right? Uh, so that it demonstrates that you can access and work on the same EFS from multiple services. So if I go back to the EFS, uh, you can see this link, how to mount this EFS. Uh, so Amazon EC2 mount instructions from local VPC. So that's what I'm gonna use. Uh, so I'm gonna click that. Okay, and we are going to use a Cloud9. And one thing to note, if, you're, if you are using Cloud9, um, you have to attach the same security group uh, on the EC2. Uh, remember the security group uh, that we had to attach to the Lambda, which is same as the EFS. Uh, so we have to do the same to the EC2 that's running as Cloud9. Okay, I'm going to click actions, then networking, then change security groups. So this is the default security group, the same security group we used in EFS and Lambda. So click this and then click assign security groups. Okay, we should be good. Uh, now let's install this Amazon EFS utils. I come here back to my cloud nine. Okay, the installation is complete. Now mounting the file system. Okay, create a new directory. So let's do that. I'm just gonna copy and paste. Okay, we have this EFS directory. All right, so then I'm going to use the EFS mount helper and then mount the EFS that we created uh, on that EFS folder. So let's do that. Okay, it should be mounted. All right, so under EFS, now this message folder appeared. Uh, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go inside the message and show you the content. Uh, so for that, we need to elevate ourselves to sudo. And then if I do a ls, this is message, and then we are gonna go inside sudo message. And then if I do ls, so there you go, this is the file named content. Uh, so if we do a cat on this content, we should see hello from EFS that we inserted using API and Lambda. So let's do cat content. Here you go guys and girls, hello from EFS. So now if I delete this and then do a get from the API and the Lambda, we should not get anything back. Uh, so let's do that. How about we do five? content and then I'm just gonna delete this save this okay and then go back to our uh, terminal okay so now if we do just a curl we should get nothing back 
How do you go? There are no messages. And also just for fun, I'm going to insert some stuff. Hello from Cloud9. Hello from Raj. And thanks for watching this EFS Lambda demo. How about that? Okay, let's save this. All right, now on the left, we're going to do a curl and we should get all those messages back. Here we go. All right, guys and girls, this is how you use EFS in Lambda and you can use the EFS from multiple other AWS services and you can use that within Lambda. All right, if you like the video, please click the like button, smash it. If that's something you are into, uh, subscribe and again, please comment. It really helps this channel grow. Also, I have created a Facebook page where I share upcoming videos, uh, behind the scenes pictures, and occasionally picture of my dog. Um, all right, that's the video guys and girls. Hopefully you guys and girls enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next lecture. Bye.